Hey everyone, Zerk here from Lapix. Got another video for you guys today. I got this MacBook here. It's an A1990, so it's a 15 inch um, 2019 MacBook Pro. And it's in here because it has no power and it's not turning on. So we need to see what the symptoms are. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. You guys are all doing well today. Doing a few of these MacBook ones in a row. So yeah, it's always fun. I do that because they usually have similar problems um, unless it's like obvious liquid damage or, or something obvious but uh, we save them that's why they're in here a lot <laughs> we get a lot of similar stuff so um, because they fail usually the same way especially certain models fail the same type of way so we got about almost five amps and we're getting about so we got about five volts and we're getting almost what point four amps and let's try all of them because it doesn't matter if we try each port See if we're getting the same thing on each port, because that's important. Um, that could be a communication problem or something else, or there could be a damage port. See this one, see that? That one's hovering a little bit differently. So it could be a possible C32 problem, right? Because we're changing ports and we're getting a little bit of a lower current on there, on the ampage there. So let's see if it does the same thing on the other side, because that makes it a little bit more interesting, right? <laughs> Okay, so we're getting about the same there, and then, and we're getting nothing there, right? So usually when you see symptoms like these, because there's multiple different uh, amps going on there, right? The multiple different symptoms for each one, then um, seems to be a problem, maybe the CD32 uh, issue there. The connector is on the same port there, and uh, if something symptoms are changing, that means it's using a different CD32. Uh, most of the time and when that happens usually there's a problem with that that chip on there so on on the ones that have four ports so the more ports you have um the more potential chances of failure right because there's more ports there's more chance for that to fail and if we pop it open here i don't know if we can actually see sometimes see 32s on usually they're on like the bottom side or they're on top side so um if we're looking at it here we can probably see one of them looks like there's probably one at least one here close to the USB-C port, right? That makes a bit of sense is that big chip. It has a little Texas um, instrument style chip or just a little Texas icon there. And usually that means there's a problem. So there kind of looks like there might be some type of liquid or something going on there. It's a little harder to see there, but there's a little bit of like a stain there. So that could be possibly what's causing the problem. Now on models like this, especially for anything that runs through for the USB-C, for these um, ICs to um, have now these the ICs have a problem, right? These CD32s, if they, they have a problem, you have to have all four of them working to for this to power on and be corrected. So let's go ahead. I think what we need to do is we need to open up the board. We need to go ahead and take a look at it. We flip it over, take a look at it, and see what's going on. Okay, so we move the board. Fairly dusty. Sometimes make a difference there. But uh, we want to see if there's any obvious damage. So let's go ahead. Um, let's take out one of our USB-C connections. I think that might be a good idea, right? So we need to get power in somehow. Let's see. Let's see if any anything's changed anyway because we did remove the battery and we did remove lots of different connections. There it's always good to just double check that before you dive in deep. Because once you dive in deep, maybe no way out, right? So let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's get my USB C tester. Let's try it again. Let's see what we get. So we do have different, well, it's about the same symptoms, right? It's about five volts and well, almost 0.3 amps. Probably doing the same thing there. Looks like nothing's really changed since removing the board, which we don't really expect it to anyway. But let's go ahead, let me bring over my thermal cam here too. Let's show the screen capture. Go ahead, ooh, look at that one. See that? You see one of the CD32s is actually getting really active. And that's probably the bad one there because you see even on the bottom right corner looks to be pretty bad so most likely that there is a culprit there it's pulsing too so um again now one of these needs to work i mean all of these need to work for for one of them to work so what we need to do is let's go ahead and take a look at this one under the microscope because maybe that's giving the problem and look at that Ooh, it's cooking it's like a heartbeat almost right boom boom Boom, 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 boom. Yep, just like that. So let's stop playing with that one. And we know that we see one that is bad. And if we actually take a look 
Um, but you see that looks like it would be a little bit stained. So let's go into the microscope. Maybe there's liquid under there. It's corroded, which would make a lot of sense. This one. So you see that little, like, uh, I can't really say L, but yeah, it kind of looks like a little bit of an L shape there, or kind of looks like door handle or however you want, <laughs> you want to look at it. We see that that clearly is, looks like it's been a little bit li impacted here, right? Going like that and even possibly over here. So probably there's probably liquid under here. Maybe it's, maybe it's corrosion, right? If we look, even though it's dusty, we don't really see too much, but something looks like it maybe hit this area, even a little bit down there. Um, and we need to see, but that's the one, the problem that we're having. So let's go ahead and look, see if we can see the corner there. Cause we saw the corner was pulsating, right? So there's probably a short on maybe that one end of it. Very hard to see under there going this way, but nothing super obvious, no green chunk. Um, that we can see. So, Alright, so we're going to need to do a removal for this one. Uh, we did actually try a reflow floor, but that wasn't good enough. Um, so we need to see what's going on underneath. And uh, it's probably just a, be the best thing to do would be just to replace them for that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You need to be really careful too because there's uh, the solder is really easy to get damaged here, especially making a damage to the board. So you don't want that. Now we need to clean up the solder balls. You can see that there is a lot of them there because the new chip is actually going to have the solder balls underneath it. So it's going to help connect it. Uh, you don't want to do a reball for that unless you really have to or if you had to have uh, very specific ones in there if we had to remove it from uh, a certain board and then put them back on. You do it that way. Otherwise, just get another chip. You can do a replacement for it. At least for this model, it'll work that way. And uh, we can use our hot air after we, d we clean it up, replace it, and now we can go ahead and test it and see if it works. Let's go ahead and let's plug it in. I did also replace the uh, USB-C connection because there was some damage there. Let's plug it in and see what we're getting. We get about five volts and these ones do require a battery so you have to have a battery plugged in now we're getting our 20 switched over and our amps are climbing probably the fans are going to spin soon and we probably should get a display there's the fan spin and let's see okay so it's showing the battery icon which is a significant thing well that's good um probably the battery was completely dead and just needs to charge up so i'm going to let it sit on the side there it will charge so usually it will lower back an ampage to a very low state and then it will crank up once the battery has enough have juice to turn it on so we'll just wait for that for a little bit and yeah that should be really about it there we go there we go so it looks to be good he got his name on both these computers <laughs> all right he actually has two computers so anyways guys i hope you guys are watching this video on doing the, the macbook logic board repair on the 15 inch a1990 if you did like this video, please leave a like, really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of logic board repairs, MacBook repairs, data recoveries, lots of cool, fun stuff on this channel. If you guys are interested at least in that for it, definitely go ahead and check that out. Otherwise, see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.